Hello YouTube Reloaders! Thanks for watching, Hornady Loader here. My standard disclaimer, I am not an employee of Hornady Manufacturing, nor do I have any interest, financially or otherwise, in the sale of Hornady products. I've been reloading for almost 35 years, and for the last 20 years I've been using Hornady equipment almost exclusively, hence the name Hornady Loader. The Hornady logo is a registered trademark of Hornady Manufacturing, Grand Island, Nebraska. Brass, the reusable part of a cartridge. It's why our hobby is called reloading. Without brass, we would probably just call it loading. Reloaders spend a fair amount of time at the range lovingly gathering our brass from the ground. We spend more time washing our brass than we do washing our own bodies. We take pride in how clean we can get our brass. We meticulously weigh it and measure it, and we spend more time trimming and reshaping it than we do trimming and reshaping our own hair and fingernails. Some of us even wear latex gloves so our brass isn't subjected to corrosive oils from our fingers. And then what do we do? We do the worst thing you can do to a piece of brass. We fill it with gunpowder, plug the end with a piece of lead, violently slam it into a pressure chamber, and then we light the gunpowder on fire. Ah! This causes unimaginable pressures to build up within our beloved brass as it deforms and expands against the chamber walls. Then we violently eject it from the chamber, causing it to fly through the air and land on the ground. Then we do it all over again. We are, after all, reloaders. This constant expansion and contraction of the brass causes it to become hard and brittle. Eventually it will split or crack, especially around the neck and shoulder. Fortunately, this hardening of the brass is reversible. By heating the neck and shoulder, the brass can be softened and will become more malleable. This process is called annealing. I won't pretend to be an expert in metallurgy. I won't go into a diatribe on atomic diffusion and the ductility of various metals. Let's just say that annealing your brass makes it more malleable, reducing the chance that it will crack or split, thereby extending the life of our beloved brass. I've been looking for a, a good annealing device for a while now. And this weekend I went to a gun show and I, I think I found what I was looking for. Uh, if you look on uh, YouTube uh, and search for annealing brass or brass annealing, you'll find a lot of videos, uh, some homemade devices that, that, you know, work pretty good. Some are good, some are kind of insane. Uh, there's also some... Uh, uh, manufactured uh, uh, annealing devices. Uh, some of them are wildly expensive, some of them are, are less so. But uh, some of the things that I was looking for with an annealing device is number one, it needs to be affordable. I, I can't afford, you know, two, three thousand dollars for an annealing device. Uh, this one here is uh, two hundred and seventy five dollars, so it, it was, uh, well, you know, it was affordable. Uh, I also wanted one that was automatic. I didn't want to have to sit there and, and put cases in the thing uh, as it ran. I wanted to be able to, to fire it up and even though since there's flame involved I have to kind of babysit it, I can do other things while the uh, annealing process is going on. So it has to automatically feed the cases and, and the whole process has to be automatic. Uh, I also wanted one that used a uh, uh, a torch uh, and an automatic uh, indexing system or a way to spin the uh, the case uh, so that I didn't have to, to hook up a drill to it and sit there and, and hold the drill uh, trigger down. So this is a completely automatic uh, device. It's made by, an, it's called Anneal Ease. A-N-N-E-A-L-E-E-Z. -E -E you can uh, find them at annealease.com. Uh, they, like I said, it sells for two seventy five. I think the shipping is free. Uh, you have to check the website uh, for that. They're here uh, locally in Florida. Um, I was at the gun show in Deland, Florida. I think they are uh, also in Deland, or at least very nearby. But they designed it. Uh, up top here we have the bin for the uh, uh, cases. I've got 35 223 cases in there. It looks like I could probably easily fit over 100 in there. It's got the two uh, indexing wheels. Uh, the bottom one has a non-slip surface on it here, uh, and as the uh, case comes down, uh, that non-slip surface will, will 
help to uh, spin the case in front of the uh, flame here. I'll show you that in just a second. Comes with a little uh, catch uh, tub. Uh, the tub will hold water if you're if you want to quench your uh, your cases. Although uh, the need to quench brass is is a myth. You don't you don't need to quench it. Uh, it kind of came from uh, case hardening steel. They they heat it and then they they quench it in water. Brass you don't need to do that with. So there's really no need to to, to quench it with water. Got your speed control up here on the right and your uh, your on off switch. In the back, of course it, uh, it uses propane. You can buy these Coleman propane uh, uh, cans for uh, about $250 a piece. Uh, and they say they'll, they'll do uh, about 2,000 uh, cases uh, per can. It's got a five foot uh, section of hose here, so if you want to uh, have a, an external can somewhere you can you can do that got the electronics up here uh, on the left got your uh, motor uh, control here this bolt here is uh, for uh, adjusting the nozzle of the uh, torch uh, I like to have the nozzle pointing right about at the junction between the neck and the shoulder uh, so you can you can use that nut in the back to uh, adjust the uh, uh, adjust the, where the torch uh, hits the cases. Now let me just turn it on and show you the operation of the uh, indexing. Uh, pop it on there. It's got a very bright blue light letting you know that it is operational. Now what it'll do is the top uh, wheel will pick up a case. It'll drop the case right here in front of the flame. That non-slick surface there will cause the case to spin around so it gets an even heating all the way around. Now you'll notice the timing. It will pick up the last case that it was uh, annealing and put the, the new case in within a second. So you're not wasting but or, uh, propane. Uh, shooting off into nothingness here. It's a very short period between the time when one case leaves and the new case comes in. Now one thing you may notice is it's a little bit loud. I'd like it, I would have liked for it to be a little less uh, loud, but uh, it works very well, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll deal with the noise. Okay? That's generally the operation or how the thing uh, uh, operates. Oh, let me just show you the uh, speed control. The speed control, you can slow it down to a, almost a stop, or you can speed it up to maximum here. At maximum, the uh, case ends up in front of the, the flame for roughly three seconds. At its very slowest, it's in there for about 12 seconds. You, don't want to do that. I'll show you why here in just a little bit. Okay? So, speed control right here. Now, the speed control is not there so that you can cycle through your cases really fast. It's, it's not to make the annealing process go faster. The purpose of the speed control is to regulate how long the case is in front of the flame. Uh, you can over anneal your cases uh, and ruin them. Uh, if you leave the thing on, this is a single a single torch system. Uh, about five to six seconds is good for a single torch system. If it were a double torch system, you'd probably be closer to around three or four seconds uh, in front of the flame. So the, the uh, speed control is there to adjust how long your case is in the flame, not to try to cycle through your cases faster. Okay, I'm gonna. Put my cases back up here since they haven't been annealed. Didn't have the flame on. Okay, I'm going to light it off here. One thing I wish it did come with was a little striker like you get with an acetylene torch, but uh, it doesn't. I'll have to pick one up uh, next time I'm at the uh, hardware store. Now I'll just use a lighter. 
set up here. Now what I like to do is get it so the tip of the flame is right about at the uh, right about at where the case neck is. Now, remember I told you you can uh, over anneal. I'm going to crank it up just a little bit. You can overdo it. Uh, and let me show you how you can tell that it's being overdone. I'm going to crank the speed down way low here so that the uh, case will be in the flame for way too long. I have a case coming down. Now watch that blue flame. Now we got the case in there. Now you see how the flame turns orange right there? That tells me that the case is cooking off some of the actual material for the case that uh, the case is made of. That case is ruined. And I'm gonna take that case and put it aside because I don't want to use that case uh, in my reloading. I'm gonna adjust the speed here. So the cases are under the flame for roughly five seconds. That would give me just about the right amount of time for those cases to be under the flame. Okay, let's take one of the cases here. Now, if you see, if you can see this on the video, I hope you can, we have a discoloration basically coming down to right about there on the case. Uh, it's not uh, blackened or charred. Uh, if we look at one of the cases that was uh, done way too long, You see how much further down the discoloration comes. We also have a band of, of, of dark purple, dark blue. We've got some charring right there where it's actually turned the case black. Uh, this is a, an example of an over annealed case. This case is ruined. I'm going to crush it and throw it away. It's no good. Uh, you want your cases to look about like that, where the, uh, the annealing comes down to right about there. It's uh, basically just a, a little bit of discoloration. It's not uh, it's not blackened. You don't have purple stripes or black uh, black uh, sections of it. That's a fairly good uh, annealed case. Now, some folks uh, will anneal do their annealing where they don't even get the discoloration. It it works that way. I like to go by the color. Uh, others will argue that you don't need to go by the color, but uh, that's basically the way I do it. Now, you'll notice when you buy military brass, uh, it'll look, it'll have that discoloration on it. Um, I get questions all the time, you know, gee, I bought this, this military brass and it's all discolored and ugly looking. What's, what, what's the deal? Is this stuff safe to shoot? Absolutely. Uh, all manufacturers anneal their cases. Uh, the difference between military brass and uh, commercial outlets like uh, uh, Winchester or Remington is Winchester and Remington know their customers like nice shiny cartridges. So they'll, uh, they'll polish their brass after they do the annealing. The military uh, doesn't care too much about uh, aesthetics. Uh, they will. Uh, they won't uh, polish the brass after after the annealing process. So, uh, just know that all manufacturers anneal their brass, and if it's discolored, and if you buy military brass, you'll probably notice that it's discolored like that. It's perfectly fine to shoot. Um, it just hasn't been polished. Okay. Now, uh, it's also possible to under anneal. Uh, your brass and in that case you might as well not even bother um, but I found that on this particular unit 
about five seconds, four to five seconds, roughly, uh, is about the right amount of time uh, to uh, anneal your brass. Again, if you've got a, a, a double torch system, you're going to knock that probably in half, uh, maybe three seconds, uh, maybe up to four seconds. Uh, it depends on the, on the machine and how how uh, high you have your uh, your torch set and so on and so forth. But um, for this particular machine, I found that right around five seconds, maybe even six seconds, is uh, gives me the right uh, the right amount of annealing for my brass. But again, it, it's a nice little unit. It's automatic. I can fire it up, put a hundred hundred cases in there. Uh, maybe a little bit less if I'm doing 308. By the way, it will fit 223 and 308 uh, in here. You don't have to change wheels or anything. Uh, I think they said they do have uh, wheels with larger openings. If you're loading, I don't know, maybe 50 caliber or something very large, uh, you can contact them about that. Uh, again, it's annealies.com. Uh, I've got the uh, the uh, URL in the, in the uh, description of the video. You can probably also see it somewhere on the screen here. Somewhere. It depends on where I put it when I put this video together. But um, great little unit. It's automatic. I can fire it up, put 100 cases in there, and I can do other things uh, like trim some cases or, or whatever, you know, other task I have to do while this thing operates. Uh, it's a little loud. Eh. You know, um, you know, I don't know. It's up to you if you uh, if you like the noise or not. I usually put headphones on and uh, listen to music uh, when I'm doing tedious tasks. So that's the Anneles uh, by Anneles.com uh, here in Florida. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Maybe even learned something. If so, please click the like button. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and happy reloading.